Well, we'll see if this works and if it's somewhat coherent, I'll post. Yeah, I decided to just use my clear label maker um, things uh, to go about. And I've been writing uh, more or less, uh, you know, obviously not. Like I said, I I'd certainly, this is, I'm just playing around. We'll see how it goes. And I don't uh, think a th single thing here is original. It's just like a Frankenstein's monster of... You know, I've just been grabbing things from all kinds of other um, ru uh, rules from other games and uh, just going about it. So we'll see here. I'm going to do 10 turns. Like you can see here, it's going to be the uh, the green army versus the blue army. I'll go over things relatively... Well, I'll just go about it. Uh, the victory conditions are um, you, get, uh, you have to occupy more enemy cities than your opponent and still retain control of at least one friendly city. You do not need to occupy uh, a friendly city to have control, but you do need to, like, uh, go through them or, or go through the city or, you know what I mean, to, you know, rid them if uh, the other, the opponent has taken uh, one of your cities. But to control an enemy city, you do need to a garrison, uh, put garrison there. So if you don't have a... Um, troops there at the end of the whatever or at any point it's not considered that uh, set up um, oh shit I'll have to move this guy over he's not allowed to go there so yep he's good so, uh, he, oh yes he's cavalry so he's allowed um, set up all units must be in a friendly uh, city or an adjacent space to a friendly um, city except for cavalry they can be uh, two uh, spaces away that's why I've got the cavalry here and I'll go quick I'll talk about the the um, step losses and all this stuff like I said I don't know if it, this is just gonna see what uh, I mean there's so many moving parts and so many new things going on for me here it's not funny who goes first it's I'm just gonna uh, roll a die 10 and whoever gets uh, the highest one goes a few terms which are gonna be typical for most people uh, there's a headquarters see each army gets one headquarters uh, each army is going to get one artillery. Uh, there's infantry. Those are just going to be the straight up number ones. Uh, and uh, I'll just tell you right off the bat, there's a one that starts off with 12 strength points. That's your elite. So uh, each army is going to have one elite um, infantry unit. They also get three regular uh, infantry units that are at eight strength points at, at the beginning. And then they have two reserves uh, for... Uh, four strength points and then they've got also a cavalry that starts off with two strength points and then like I said the uh, headquarters and the artillery. Um, die roll modifier, instead of zone of control, I've, I've never been a big fan of that uh, term. I, I prefer threat zone. Um, I'm also, I was like, well there's line of supply and line of communication here and I was like what am I going to do and I'm just going to call it a logistics line. There's also going to be column shifts, obviously there's the combat results table, the terrain effects chart, a turn track, um, and a thing called artillery support, it's because you're going to see uh, how I'm doing it. And then there's the retreat, there's also replenishment and step loss, so there we go, and I'll look at my other uh, things. Oh, the next one's the turn sequence, so it's going to be a bit, uh, like, um, well, here we go with the turn sequence. So the first thing... Um, Let's say it's the green, the green's turn. So the first thing they can do, if it's necessary, of course at the very first turn it's not necessary, but the HQ can, within a, um, a, a valid logistics line, if, uh, so, but if it does this, it's not allowed to move in that turn and it can't do something else later. So it's, it's a decision point. Do you want to uh, replenish uh, one of your infantry units not cavalry and it doesn't matter about artillery um, basically you would just alter uh, pop them up a step up up the step so I'll, I'll go over them quickly uh, not quickly I gotta stop saying that so let's say here and I don't need the four cents for this so let's say uh, we're gonna go with this uh, elite infantry I do want to figure out some way for later on at this point in time uh, Turn, uh, time to f uh, differentiate later on because sometimes they're going to have the same amount of strength points as other people once they take a, uh, a step loss. So they'll have a 12, uh, one step loss, they'd go down to an 8, then to a 4, and then to a 2. They're, they're good, they're darn good uh, things. And then, we've, like I said, the regular would be 8, 4, 2, and then your, um, your reserve would be a 4, 2, the cavalry goes down to a 1, 
and uh, that's that. So the HQ could do that at the very beginning, replenish uh, one of them, one of them in a, in a logistics uh, valid logistics line. What's a valid logistics line? That's four movement points, um, and it cannot uh, that it cannot go through prohibitive terrain, which would be uh, the lake, and it cannot go uh, through an uncontested threat zone. So as long as those things uh, occur, it can do anybody within four movement points, any infantry unit within four movement points, if, if necessary. Then the movement phase. Um, like I said, if the HQ uh, replenished uh, one of their infantry units and it took, you know, popped them up a step in the previous phase, it cannot move. Um, units have to stop their movement, except for cavalry, I should say. So uh, all non-cavalry units, when they, f when they uh, b bump into a river, they have to stop their movement. Um, the cavalry are allowed to go across. Uh, rivers uh, cost two movement points to get across. The broken train does not affect movement. And then the woods... Uh, um, did, oh yeah, I'm using the... Um, this. Uh, oh no, I've got woods and swamp. Oh, I forgot about that. I, I completely, um, completely forgot that I've also got swamp in here because I was modeling the uh, Masurian Lake. So I'm going to have to go and adjust uh, uh, some other things here. Uh, well, I'm glad I'm doing the video. I would have started trying to play the game. And I went, oh, darn. So at least now I can go off and uh, alter the um, the train bits. I forgot about that, that swamp bit. Because I've got, I just did the woods um, and the, well, the other stuff. Uh, what else do I have here? Units must stop movement except for cavalry when they encounter a river. Units must stop when they enter an enemy threat zone. Units can pass through spaces with units in them, but they cannot end movement. Uh, there's no stacking in this game. Units uh, cannot pass through enemy units. Um, what else? Uh, cavalry, though, can reserve one or more of their movements for the second movement phase, which is after after the combat. Uh, is there anything else I gotta say about... well I'll go through the different uh, terrain things in a minute, but then we got combat and units can uh, only attack enemy units that are adjacent to them. Units are not required to attack all eligible enemy units in their threat zone, so you can gang up on somebody, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, like let's say with the world undone, that's, uh, you can't do that. Um, which is, I can remember Rob just it drove him nuts. Uh, cavalry cannot attack inf infantry units on their own. Uh, headquarters and artillery cannot perform direct attacks. Well, cavalry—I mean, headquarters don't as at, any, at all. All they're there for is to uh, provide um, uh, bump up, bump up the numbers uh, if they can. The artillery, on the other hand, uh, provides a plus two to the attacker's die roll uh, to um, any adjacent. Um, uh, infantry unit that's attacking so but it can only do it once in that you know it per turn and if it had moved that turn in the like in the previous phase it certainly can't uh, perform the combat so you have to make sure where where you're putting the artillery and they cannot retreat uh, that's an, I think I've already mentioned that the headquarters cannot retreat as well so you got to watch uh, watch for that um, especially <laughs> Uh, due to the fact that I was all thinking later on, it's like, okay, then what happens if uh, some, well, if, well you, do, you keep your, art, you use your artillery only for the offense and you keep it away um, if you think you're going to get attacked. Uh, it's as simple as that. Because if you're forced to retreat, you're going to obliterate, um, auto obliterate the artillery. Uh, if you know, you get the idea. Uh, if cavalry are used in a combined attack, if you want to, um, they will take a step loss after um, after the the combat results are done, regardless of the effect. Uh, essentially, I still have to finish the. Um, actually, I have to still finish the uh, the um, the CRT downstairs, the combat results table. Yeah, like I said, headquarters. Oh yeah, headquarters and artillery have a defensive combat value of one, so you can de for determining the odds. Um, what else is there? Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, of course, cavalry can uh, attack the headquarters of the artillery if they wish. Okay, so now we're going to get into the train. So we've got uh, the clear train. It's one movement point as per you would expect. There's no die roll modifiers for the combat. Then we've got the, the little uh, these little guys. That's the broken terrain. 
it's uh, one movement point still to go across uh, across them. It's minus and all the uh, die. Of course, it's just like many many a game. All the terrain effects are cumulative. Um, you know, for combat uh, die roll like negative die roll modifiers as well as for movement point uh, costs. Anyways, uh, for broken it, and then you're uh, it'll be minus one die roll modifier for the attacker if they're um, you know if they uh, they're attacking through that area. Uh, any of the things. That's, I'm trying to simplify, not like that other uh, rule system I did. And like I said, I still kind of do the swamp. I forgot about that. So the woods are two movement points uh, to go through them. Uh, it's minus two to the die roll modifier to the attacker. Uh, the rivers, um, uh, all non-cavalry units must stop movement when they first come into contact with the river. It's two movement points to get across a river. If all attacking units have uh, the river between them and the defender, then it's a minus two die roll modifier. Uh, if it, if there's, you know, let's say if there's more than one attacking, but you've got at least one guy across the, uh, on the same side of the river that you're uh, attacking that uh, unit, then it's only minus one uh, die roll modifier. But you're, the other guys are still somewhat affected by the river. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's not an all or nothing thing. The city, um, you must stop movement when entering the city. Um, uh, also the... Um, well, there's a few other things about the city. Oh, yeah, yeah, if, you, if you're um, attacking into the city, it's tough. Uh, you get one column shift to the left uh, to your attacker. So if you went in with three to one odds, thinking you were going in with three to one odds, it's now a two to one odds. And you're also going to get a minus two die roll modifier to your attack. Lake's impossible, uh, impassable. You can always move at least one space, except across the lake. Uh, die roll modifiers are cumulative, like I mentioned. Uh, my battery's looking good still. Uh, here's the different categories. Like I said, I have to go downstairs and finish off this here. Oh, Jesus, I keep forgetting to stop touching the table with this uh, tripod. Uh, the combat results, uh, there's eight of them, eight different ones. You can be uh, Defender Eliminated, Defender Retreat, and a Step Loss. Uh, defender Retreat or a Step Loss, their choice. Uh, ineffective, nothing happens really. Um, defender is Eliminated and the attacker takes a step loss, or uh, another another possibility is a defender takes a step loss and the attacker takes a step loss. Another one is attacker step loss, and then another one is attacker eliminated. I just have to finish off downstairs. Uh, if the die roll modifiers and the die roll result in a one, let's say, um, you shift that many over to the left, you know, the, the difference, and you use the result for the one on, on that column. If the die roll modifiers uh, push and your die roll is a 12, but it pushes you, let's say, to a 14, well, then you shift your column over two, and you would use the uh, use the 12 uh, the 12 number. If a unit cannot retreat, it's eliminated. Units cannot uh, retreat across rivers. Headquarters and artillery, like I said, cannot retreat. Cavalry can retreat one or two spaces. Uh, what else do I have in this uh, thing? That's it, really. Uh, there was a second page somewhere. I think I had on something else out there. It must have been the turn, uh, the turn sequence. Yes, and then uh, yeah, I didn't finish off the turn sequence. So then the very last bit would be uh, the two bits are the headquarters can perform reinforcements if it did not, like another the replenishment of a of a. So you have to figure out, okay, am I going to take, you know, where, when am I going to do this? A deciding point. Um, as long as you didn't move and didn't do uh, any replenishment of in the first phase of the, the turn, you have, you have that option. And then the very last bit is um, uh, caval uh, the secondary cavalry movement, if they have any uh, movement points that they kept, uh, kept um, you know. I like that. So that's it. Now, like I said, I'm going to, it won't be hard. I'll just... Uh, uh, give it give it a little bit more of a punishing blow. Maybe it's um, you know um, uh, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see what uh, swamps swamps are. But uh, yeah, I'll just uh, maybe it'll be minus three to your dinner or something horrible or I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't want to get too uh, too whatever. But that's it. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be um, well interesting at the very least to see what happens. Oh, what else? Oh, this has been a fascinating time, I'll say, about this. Oh, I should maybe stop the video. Uh, but um, just to the fact that I'm like, wow, um, 
you know, I don't have to go to work. Uh, so it's pretty neat to be able to pace myself and get uh, get to focus on other, uh, like, so many things. Just, yeah, it's been great. All right, hope you're having fun. See you later.